Hello everyone. I think we are live. I don't have the intro video today because I need to update my epidemic sound. I'll get in trouble if I use that video until I update my account with them. Um, side story while I make sure audio and everything is working. The epidemic sound was overcharging me by $20 a year. I was supposed to be getting some discount. Well, the discount ended and then they lowered the price. I don't know. The last couple of years they've been overcharging me $20 a year, which I know is not that big of a deal, but I was like, Hey, can you put me to your current rate? Why am I paying more than everyone else? Like if you lowered your prices. Now, my only option was to cancel and then I have to sign up again. Like, oh, okay. You, thanks. Thanks, buddy. So yeah, anyway, it's not on my intro. Um, I'll get that this week. So tonight we are going, well, we, I am going to be critiquing your artwork again for our Patreon members. So this is a really good opportunity to just get advice that you may be able to apply to your own work. These are not, I mean, it's art. There's not only one way to look at things. This is, these are just tips I would give to my own students. So don't take anything I say, don't take it as a negative or discouragement or, oh my gosh, I'm not good. I'm not going to do this anymore. These are just little bits of advice you can do to help improve yourself. And what else do I want to go over on that? I think that's it. Um, I don't know how many submissions there are a lot. So this may get broken down into two different live streams um, this week and next week, which I knew I told you guys that last week that might happen because Lots of you guys wanted this done, which is awesome. Thank you for everyone who submitted. Also, just because it was weird on my front page not to have an item for auction, because I always have that with the live stream, I found something. This little house finch, you can buy. It's an 8x10 acrylic painting on a Frederick's watercolor canvas board. So if you want to own him, I think the starting bid was $75. I don't remember. Go to lockery.com. The little link for the auction thing is there. So if you want to bid on that guy, he is available. He was $250 on my site. So, you know. Bit of a discount there if you want to go in for the auction. I still need to send the seahorse. Um, and uh, Joey, your peacock is on the way. It should be there tomorrow, I believe. And I think that's it. So, okay, we are good. Let's, oh, why did this just happen? Why, hold on. Oh, God, something jumped on there and I thought the whole, okay, we're good. I think we're good. That was just a weird little YouTube glitch. Whew. Um, scare me. Okay. So let's get started. I have not even looked at these, so I just need to go into my email and let's see who was, yeah, there's a few tonight. So this will, this will, I will be shocked if this doesn't go today and next week. Um, let's see, which was the last one? I think Hannah was the last one from last week. Yeah. Okay. So the next one in this row is from Patty. So let me go ahead and save. Oh, hold on. I actually, one second. I knew I was forgetting something. I just need to clean up um, critiques. I have last week's in here still. So let's make my life easier and delete all of these. Um, nope, don't delete that. You're currently using that. That would be a problem. One second, I'm sorry. Definitely not prepared again. Okay, now I can save these. This is going to be a charcoal piece, I believe, and I didn't even save it to where I want to save it at all. Good job. Let's try that again. There's one of them. Here's the second. Well, it'll take me a minute to get into this. I'm half asleep. I missed my nap today because I decided to argue with idiots on the internet. Because why wouldn't I do that? Why wouldn't I waste my time doing that today? It was a fish form. Someone was being an idiot. I had to make sure they were aware. Um, okay. And therefore I'm tired because I didn't take my nap instead. I shouldn't admit that I did that, huh? Okay. So, oh, that is awesome. And where is our reference photo? Over here. Let me make sure I've got this on camera, right? Um, there we go. And <coughs> it is not completely on camera, so let me just shrink this a little bit. So when I'm showing you colors, it will show up on screen. That, oh, I really need to shrink this down. Come on. I'm sorry, guys. I am not as prepared as I thought I was. I really thought I was good today, too. And it doesn't want to let me shriek this. Oh, and I forgot my remote. 
for the Wacom tablet. Let's turn that, at least I remember to charge it. So I charged that and I charged my microphone today. So it could be worse, that's for certain. Shrink you down, shrink you down. We are almost ready. This will go faster once I get a couple of these into this and kind of get into the swing of things. Okay, let me move you just a bit. There we go. We don't really need to see the color on this one, so we're good. Okay, so what, who is the artist? I don't have any of that pulled up right now. So this is from Patty, who said this is my charcoal version on gray, nine by 12. Bottom is your reference printout. This is my first charcoal drawing. Dang, see charcoal, I am telling you guys, if you want to improve any medium, you can be an acrylic painter, a colored pencil artist, get some charcoal, work on that, you will improve your value so much and charcoal is actually really easy to get started with. First charcoal and look how awesome this is. Um, let's see, for the last three years in retirement, I, I do strictly as a hobby, I have doubled in more. Okay, let's go on. Um, Ah, she found my YouTube tutorial through the podcast with Lindsay, the frugal crafter. I love Lindsay. That was fun. Okay. Um, my okay, here we go. My question is, how do you know what areas to brighten and darken? I'm decent at noticing detail, science, math background. To me, the reference does not have white on the belly area, only shades of gray. You used white on the belly and it looks great. I followed and you and lightened the belly up, but I never would have done that by myself. Is there some trick or technique? These are great, great questions. Is there some trick or tr technique other than using the computer program to figure out how much punch, how much to punch up the contrast, or is it just experience and experiment? Honestly, yes, experience and experiment. That is a huge part of it. I have problems deviating from a reference. Oh, I get that. And especially you said you're from a math and science background. So you're used to, these are the rules. We follow these rules and these rules are safe. So I get, I trust me, I get that. And yeah, experience. And the more you draw, I think that you will sort of accidentally end up making changes that you you wouldn't have felt comfortable doing a few years ago. I mean, I remember, and we're going to get into this actual art in a second here, but I remember years ago being, I was at a dog show and they had, um, there was an artist who did pet portraits. And I remember seeing how much like blues and purples and magentas were in these dogs' coats and it, it, they looked so realistic. But then there were so many colors that I'm like, I know that isn't in the reference photo. What are you seeing that makes you brave enough to do that? Experience. I saw it. I liked it. I started trying to apply it little by little into my own artwork. And now I'm totally comfortable doing it. But just, I think being aware that that's a goal, I think that's so important in your work. Yeah, my goal may be to start introducing extra color. It's not going to happen day one, day two, year one or year two. You know, it may take a while. But the fact that you're aware that that is a goal you'll you'll start being more comfortable i think pushing yourself with that i do think that it's really um helpful to use lightroom or use some photo editor to punch things up to see how you're going to like it for example i am working on a piece myself uh i just started last night and i was messing around with the clouds and black, black and white i'm actually going to go with indigo black and white so kind of two-tone but anyway um i was messing around with that i was messing around with different black and white colors and i had to adjust so much to make that look good and when it was just took the photo the clouds were the main thing i took the photo made them black and white they went from being so there was so much dimension in color and when i made it black and white it looked flat it looked terrible i had to mess with it in, in lightroom until it looked good and then i ended up not copying it at all in my, my painting so there's that but so i do have a serial painting coming by the way a lesson here soon but um it has a cactus a goldfish a fork and a leash make that fit together so um anyway point is that when you make something into black and white, you've got to use some sort of photo editor. Of course, I love Lightroom, but Lightroom is not the only option. There are a lot of free options. There's a lot of free apps on your phone that you can just adjust the contrast and see if something is going to look better. And not just with your reference photo. Once your artwork is done, especially something like this, I can take a photo with the phone really quickly, mess with it and see, would it look better if I made my darks a little darker? My, you know, I up the contrast a little bit. If it would, okay, now I can go instantly back to my artwork. I've seen what it'll look like if I make those, cha those changes. And so it's not so scary anymore. It'll help you to be a lot more brave to do something like that. So, okay, let's actually look at the artwork here. This looks wonderful. I like how much you hyped up the contrast there. 
let's see our shading. The only thing, and, but see, it's like this in the reference photo, and this is one of the problems when we get into the whites, where you have areas, uh, let's go with you. I don't know what pen I have up right now. Yeah, that works. We have areas here that are kind of flat. Now, you did what the reference photo has, so this comes back to what you were talking about, where it's, you're, you, you have a hard time deviating from that photo. When I look at that, I, I would maybe darken that just a little, just a teeny bit there so that it's not so right. This area and this area is almost exactly the same. And it is on your reference photo. You copied what you saw, so that's awesome. But also when you're talking about wanting to pull things out brighter, that's really what, I, I would tone that down a little bit. Um, just so that it's a little bit more three-dimensional, but that is a minor nitpicking. I mean, I am, that's the only thing that I'm like, yeah, I might change that a little bit. The other thing here, I might flatten out, uh, let's do this. Um, I'm gonna have to pull this over to my other computer or other monitor, here we go. I might flatten this out a little bit. His beak is a little bit more curved than I would like to see. And it is curved a bit on the photo, so I see what you're seeing, but I would tone like just, a little bit. Just pull that down so that it's not so up and over. It's, it's a little bit more angular than I would like. You don't need to do a lot, just a, just a little bit. Or actually in this one, it's kind of the reverse. I can take that white and let's change brushes to something more reasonable here. Um, the white can come up a little bit more, tone that down. Oh, hey, look, I can see now. There we go. Actually, let's undo that now that I can see what I'm doing. But if we pull the white up a little bit more, I'm gonna soften that some, just so it's not so angular. It looks, it just stands out a bit too much there. Now, here's the thing. When you talked to, you asked, how do I know what I'm gonna make brighter? So like the chest, I made that a lot um, brighter on mine, so it stood out. Just because I looked at it and thought, it doesn't stand out enough to me. I just want those areas to stand out. It's not, I honestly didn't even put that much thought into it other than I think I'd like this to stand out a little bit more than it currently does. Not because it's accurate, just because I think it looks nicer. And again, this comes back to just the experience. The more you paint, the more you draw, you'll do something on accident and think, oh, I kind of like that. Last night, I've got so many stories tonight. Last night, I'm working on a canvas. It's a round canvas and I painted it my indigo blue, or actually I put two coats of gesso. I meant to sand it totally forgot, got all excited to paint, put a coat of indigo, indigo blue and went, crap, that's not smooth, I forgot to sand it. So I dried it all, took it outside, sanded it down, came in, that accident, I have to do a whole new video showing you guys how to paint denim. It looks exact, it looks like I took denim jeans and just put it over the canvas. It was the craziest, and then where it wore off from when I was sanding, I'll, I took photos, so I will show you guys over on Patreon um, at the beginning of this video, just because it was cool. But I'm gonna do a painting where I've got denim, like I'll put a pocket, like uh, the butt pocket on jeans on the back. It was the easiest effect. I, I never concerned myself with trying to create denim, but I accidentally did something and went, oh my gosh, that is like, that is such a cool technique. Sometimes you just will do something and realize, I really like that. It wasn't my intent, but I really like it. So that comes back to like on this guy, you're talking about the lesson where I, I, I've done too bright a few too many times and I just liked it. So again, experience, it will get easier for you um, to figure out where you wanna lighten something. And I like this guy. The main things that I, I look at at this point on deciding if I want to change something is, is something standing out to me? too much. So in this case, um, yes, there's a couple of things that are standing out a little bit more than what I would like them to be. So let's pull this up. This area here, whoops, let's, there we go. This area here is really a little bit too big there. That looks good, but also my attention when I look at this is there and here, and then the beak, how it was. Um, more than I like it to be. I want it to be more here. So I don't want to be just below the eye as much. I actually really do like yours. And you know what's interesting? Your eye, the white around the eye is too bright. That helps it to stand out more. Too bright according to the reference photo, but good according to your artwork. I like that it stands out more because it draws attention to that area of the eye. But anyway, going on to this, one thing that I think I would, or two things I think I would change um, on this guy, just, uh, 
I would tone this down, like just very soft. Oops, not that soft. Go here, just a little bit. Just that little change makes it not so bright, just a little bit. So it's not quite as attention grabbing in that area. You can still see the detail, just a little bit toned down. So I think I would do that. And then same thing I was talking about here, like maybe pull in a little bit of shading here, just a little. Um, yeah, there's not much. I mean, yeah, the rest this, I, I really think this is a strong piece. I think you did a great job on this. So very, very nice work. And knowing when you brighten stuff up, because I see what you're talking about in here around the chest, I made mine a lot brighter, um, as did you. Then the reference photo, I just like how it stood out. I thought it looked nice, especially because the background is as light as it is going on that gray paper. So that's why I made that choice. But yeah, it's gonna come from experience of sometimes you accidentally made it too bright and realized that looks really good. When I first started drawing marine life, I kept making the dolphin tails way too fantasy-like, like, like they'd be too elongated. I still, to this day, as much as I like realism, I still will usually paint dolphin tails, and not all the time, but sometimes still do it that way just because it was wrong initially. I just like it. You just get to the point where you like something you did that maybe wasn't accurate. So give. I think in your case, just giving yourself permission to use the reference photo, but you're not married to the reference photo. Like he's your buddy but he's not your only option here. Like you've got other buddies. So your other buddies can be the better, you know, different choices there. So if that helps, um, but no beautiful work. Uh, yeah, not a lot I would do uh, to change, just tone down just a little bit in here. He looks great. He's, I think he's missing some toes. There's a, a second toe over he, uh, this area, but yeah, no, great job. Okay. Also, Welcome to Patreon. Oops. Okay, let's see if I can manage to get through these without telling every story I've ever had. Okay. Let's save. Kristen, um, thank you so much for the suit. I have to stay quiet because I don't want to do it here. They'll get plenty of treats later. Super chat. She said, for doggos, missed you guys. Yes, I will get them a treat from you later on. They're obviously not in the room tonight, but you did get the fish get a um, treat from that. And I'm actually glad to give them some extra snacks because my Tamini Tang stabbed my clownfish yesterday. So I'm trying to get her some extra food. So, you know, she appreciates your super chat for the boys, but I'm going to give them a... a snack. I put extra vitamins to help her heal better. <laughs> to be fair though, if you feel too bad for the clownfish, don't. She started the fight because I could tell she had been picking, somebody had been picking on that to many thing. He had a couple of frayed fins. They're healing nicely, but I think she was picking on him and starting a few too many, um, pushed him too far. I came in last night and saw where he finally snapped and tangs have, they're called surgeon fish because they have a scalpel towards the base of their tail. And he was taking advantage of that. She got shanked. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that on YouTube. But yeah, so she um, needs extra food. And there she is, chasing away Edward because, you know, she's got an attitude lately. But anyway, um, okay, back to work. So who do we have next? We've got, oh, let me open these to the camera or the thing. Um, so we've got an owl. So let's read who this is. Okay, so this is from Nancy. Nancy says the reference is from uh, Wendy Poole. Wendy Pole Levisor, I just butchered that and I apologize, Wendy, with permission, various Pixabay and Pexel references were used for the maple leaves. The owl and the down tree, I wanted to be realistic. The leaves around the owl, I intended to be more whimsical and colorful. I struggled creating more contrast. It's a 16 by 20, Golden's Acrylics, Belgian Linen Canvas Board. Those are so nice to work on. Um, they have a case. This is Nancy. And let's go ahead now and take a look. 
make sure everything's there. Okay. So this photo is a little bit of a challenge because the position he's in, if you, even in the photo, you look at that and you're kind of like, what am I, what is going on with that bird in the back? So it, it that's always going to make it a bit of a challenge as an artist. When you're looking for your reference photo, sometimes what makes for an excellent photograph can be challenging, and which I'm sure you realized as you were working on this, it's challenging to make it look realistic because the photograph is a little bit, well, the photograph, I guess it goes with the whimsical look though. So that works for you. So that of course is going to be a bit challenging. Um, as far as the style, the leaves being more whimsical and the other part being realistic, the owl and the branch being realistic, they all look the same style to me. So if you're trying to create two separate styles, um, you're going to, and this is gorgeous. I'm not saying there's, there's anything wrong with this at all. So don't take it that way. But when you're, if you're trying to make it very obvious that you want something to be two separate styles, and maybe I read that wrong, but if you're really wanting it to be two, you want to make sure it's very obvious. So an example would be, I've seen people where they will draw buildings and they're like, I'm going to make whimsical ones. And they're like lopsided, but you look at it and you're like, okay, is that lopsided because you messed up or is it supposed to be where you go? Like you, you don't want the viewer, you want the viewer to have questions in that there's a mystery, but you don't want the viewer to have questions in that. Did you do this right? Um, whereas when you have the really mystical or not mystical, whimsical looking buildings and they're like obviously curved. So if you're going to curve it, make it really curved. And that's the same thing I find when you're trying to do two different, I'm not sure if Nancy is in the chat. Um, if you're trying to do two different styles, it's better if you make it more obvious. Right now, the owl, the branch, everything looks like it's the same style to me. It's not a really definite um, style difference. So just a little thing when you're, if you are trying to make them two obviously different, like I've done that before where I wanted part to be pop art, part to be realistic. Like you just have to be careful that you make it very obvious that this was intentional. Not that you just got, like in my case, I had to be careful with the pop art side. Like I didn't want people to look at it and go, did she just get lazy on that section? Why doesn't that look as good as that? Like, Cause it did look like that at one stage. So just a couple things to be aware of when you're trying to make two different styles. So let's see. So let's actually critique the work though, besides that. So looking at this guy, there are a lot of colors I might, I think, I feel like the colors in a sense are conflicting with each other. The bluish grays in the, but you said whimsical. So maybe that was part of your goal was having, maybe that's one of the things you were doing to, to make sure that it stayed more whimsical. But I wonder if, if they would fit together. Like it doesn't feel to me that the bird, the leaves, and cause you use multiple reference photos. So this is normal, but it doesn't feel to me like the bird, the branch and the leaves, in the background are all from the same photo. And when you're combining multiple photos, ideally you wanna make them feel like they fit together. So in this case, we've got a lot of these blues, this bluish gray, I mean, it's not blue, but you know, it's a cooler gray. Um, in the branch, I would actually have liked to see more browns like what the reference photo has so that that pulls the bird and the branch together. Right now, the bird doesn't feel like he's really a part of this. So let's do, let's do a few changes and see if we can, um, let's go on you. I'm going to add a layer. Okay. So let's see what happens if we just bring some of these colors a little bit together. So uh, before we get started, just design wise, a couple things. Um, this area here, see how the leaves don't, oops, this is not doing what, I, oh no, redo. Dang it, layer. Why do I always do that? Layer, new, layer. I undid one too many. Okay. Um, you, that's why, cause my opacity is almost non-existing. Look at how the background and that is also not the color I want. Um, the background, everything is just kind of, there's a, a, an outline all the way around the owl. Nothing is going behind him. Everything is perfectly around him. So this is one of the reasons he doesn't feel a part of the scene. The leaves, you either need some going behind them, some in front of them, there needs to be some overlapping. So that's one tip. When you were combining multiple reference photos, make sure you're positioning things so that there's overlap that's going it somewhere needs to be overlapping. So you can clearly tell what's in front and what's behind a little bit more. So that's going to be tip one. And no matter what subject, you could be painting a horse portrait, make sure you don't get this halo effect where everything's just kind of, you know, not quite going around. 
So tip number one there. Well, actually, I think there's been multiple tips, so I shouldn't start listening. I sound ridiculous. Okay. I like that your leaves are going in a lot of different shapes and that you didn't just copy paste the same leaf everywhere. That's wonderful. Um, I really like the colors you've used in those leaves, but we need to pull some of those into the bird. So if we want to make this work, we need to start bringing some of these colors together more. So let's go ahead and, nope, not that. Let's just pull some random colors from other areas. And we can do that. I'm just going to tint the color. So I'm not doing details. This is going to look absolutely terrible. But let's start pulling some of these colors from other areas of the painting. Oops, that's going to be annoying. Let's see if that'll help a little bit. Get some of those browns in there. And we've got the browns in the bird. We'll come back to a little bit more shading on him too. But I, I just want to start pulling in so we can see what happens when we get some of these colors. We could even do a little bit of moss on that branch. would look great. I mean, you can see some are, what is it, lichen, lichen, lichen. I don't know. There's a lick. They're licking something. We're going to throw some of that maybe. Let's start creating a little bit of moss in there. So we're pulling some of those colors that were on the branches, or not the branches, the leaves. That's way too saturated. But you get the idea. I'm just starting to pull some very sloppy. This is the sloppiest Photoshop painting anyone has ever seen ever. But what's going to happen when, as I keep doing this, it starts to look like they go together, like they're um, in the same painting. And I'm just pulling some of those colors that we have in other areas just to start bringing everything a little bit more together. Um, and again, this is a super fast, super lazy way to do this, but I mean, take your time, make it good. But now the branch is starting to feel more like it goes with everything else. Let's take some of the colors that are in the bird. Same thing. I want to start pulling those colors into that branch. I want all of this to be, feel like it's the same scene. And really that gray in the background, I would probably go with something else. Neutralize, maybe even a tan, maybe... It's too much of a bluish gray. And there, it's not to say that there's not a way you couldn't make that work, but right now it's not. It's just not, the, it's a color issue. Um, so let's pull, start pulling, let's see if we can pull some of those blues then actually into the shadow on the bird. I'm gonna drop that opacity way down. Let's see if we can get him to look like he's in the photo instead of um, on top. And then we've got you, I see you've got a lot of that shading. You started with the shading, but I think you were afraid to go too dark, which I get. We all, we all feel that way. So it's not just you, but look at, look at how much more dimension, just a few brush strokes we start getting to where he doesn't look so flat. Same thing around his little cheeks. You've got some feathers you would want to break up in here for sure. We're missing all of that detail, which I don't, I'm not going to put all of that in, but we need detail in there. Um, We've got this area here. Uh, let's pull this up so you can see it all the way. Look at this. You've got the highlight. That highlight cuts down through that eye. This is a separate section. Yours is not right there. Look at how much darker we really want that to go. So that is going to be closer to the darks in the bird. So we'll start pulling those in. But right now the bird has more of a flat feel. And so we're starting to get... Whoops, that's not what I meant to do. We're starting to, oh, it's because my opacity is 100%. There's my, well, 3% is not going to do much for me either. Um, so we start getting the shading in here. There's just so much white that, like solid white, that it's just, we're, we're just too blended in. And I can, I mean, I can sit here and keep messing with this for hours um, to perfect a bunch of this. 
But by toning some of that down, and let's, while we're at it now, since we've got some of these brighter orange colors, let's start pulling some of those into the bird too. We've got, here's a magenta color. So I've got the magenta, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that, but I'm gonna gray it up. So it's really like, kind of more to put more in them. Um, let's pull that in there. So while I say use the same colors you use somewhere else, that doesn't mean the exact color. I mean, I'm using that color, but kind of muted, kind of grayed up. So there's black and white mixing with it with an acrylic painting is what I would have done there. But I wanna pull some of that color because I often say, pull those colors into the subject. Don't feel like I used magenta out of the tube for that leaf, therefore I need to use magenta out of the tube without any mixture for the owl. Well, that wouldn't make sense either. We can tone it down into a grayish tone, which works for the owl, but it has that magenta in it. So we're pulling that color into it, not necessarily just taking magenta and throwing it all over the place. So, um, and this was directly whatever color I had picked from that, um, that leaf. So again, we're starting to push all of that back. Uh, let's see. So these wings kind of, they're a little bit blurry, a little bit more out of focus. They're, you know, fluffed up behind there. Let's just go with the background color, pull some of that. And I'm going to go around those edges and just tone that down. So it's not so harsh. And this is going to help that wing. He feels like he was cut out of the reference photo and put over here. Now you are doing a great job with your detail. Wonderful work there. You see, you're seeing things accurately. It's really just the values and the shading. We want to work a little bit more on there. And then again, pulling some of those colors in. But look at how we can tone down just a bit. I'm pulling that background color in now. now. Those can stay. Actually, let's erase that because I actually like that you've got that harsh. Leave that harsh. Don't listen to me there. Let's erase that so it's bright like you had it. I like yours better than mine. Um, but let's go back over here. Just toning down a little bit. Um, and maybe not as, as toned down as what I did. Let's define a little bit more. I'll erase some. Okay, but now he's starting to feel a little bit more like he's in there. The other thing that I would do is take these leaves and have some of them go behind the owl a little bit more. And they don't need to be as defined. They can be kind of muted in the distance, like a lighter version, something like a, the leaf color, but something closer to the background. So add some of your background blues and grays to that leaf color and have that continue going behind the bird so that you can see the texture back there. And now one of the things that would be really cool in this is if you had those leaf patterns, you continued the leaf shape, but in that black and white or the, the cooler gray color, that would be a way to make this work, make that background fit with the rest of it. So they were only in the gray tones, no color, all, you know, Lionel Mint. So it's almost like a wallpaper pattern for that and then have your colored leaves on top more like what you've got. That would be a way to bring these together. You'd have this unique, almost like a wallpaper type, type in the background, I think would be a really cool way to make all of this fit together better. So you're off to a great start. It just doesn't feel finished to me because we need more shading. We need to pull some of those colors into the rest of the piece so they feel like they go together. But I think I think you could make that, that gray background work if, if all of that gray was the shape of, of leaves. So they were shaded, they're there, the detail's there, but they're all in muted gray. That are, you know, the, the gray, the, well, it's really a cool gray that you've got there. And then the leaves being the, co the color colored ones on top would look really cool. So that gives just a few changes to make him feel like he's a little bit more apart because right on its own, it just feels like the owl is very separate from the background, which is funny because I said, you know, make you or, you want to make it obvious if you're going for two different styles, but it doesn't feel like two different styles. It feels like two different photos, not two different styles, if that makes sense. So anyway, those are a few things I think you could do that would make this even better. And if you've not varnished it, you can make these changes right now. You don't have to start over if you didn't want to. Now, that said, sometimes we will create something that we absolutely love and somebody else will be like, oh, you should change this or that. You don't want to because you just love how it is now. Keep out as now. You don't have to do what I say. But those are, if it was my painting and I'm going to hang it on my wall, I'm going to make those changes. Those would be what the changes I would personally make because that's what I would like to, to look at on my wall. So there we go. But you're doing amazing work. The main thing I'd like to see you focus on though, getting some of those values in there, a little bit more shading on the bird will make a huge, huge difference. Okay, next. I even forgot to make my iced tea before I started it. I'm stuck with tap water. It is an unfortunate day. Um, and I thought I was so on time with things. Okay, next. Ooh, 
Wow, this is really pretty too. You guys are amazing. Whoops, hitting the wrong button. And let me drag these over and then I'll tell you, whoop, that is, I, do, I don't need Firefox. Go away, Firefox. Um, and my mouse is freezing up because reasons. Probably should have restarted my computer. I have not done that in a very long time. Probably should have done that before I started tonight. Come on. Oh, my mouse went to sleep. That's why. Or not mouse, my remote. Okay. So let's see what we have to say about this. This is from Noreen. She said, charcoal on Strathmore toned grain paper. My goal is to be more realistic, but maintain an artsy feel. doesn't say size. Okay. Um, yeah, no, that is great. So as far as being more realistic, I would just say a little bit more accurate in like where the shadows are on the shoulder blades. Um, that's one of the main things that's kind of standing out to me. That's not quite the same. Oh, you did an excellent job on this hand. Like that is on, I doubt this is very large. It doesn't say usually, I don't know how big Strathmore tone gray paper comes, but Usually most people are not doing it huge, huge. That is not easy to get that level of, of accuracy on a smaller piece for the hand. So that's really good. I'd like to see that on this hand up. Is that even showing? I don't know if that's even showing. Hold on. There is that mouse showing? Yeah, it is. So on this area, that hand is kind of a little bit more lumpy. I'd like to see the same level of detail you put in this hand. I would like to see up there. I think you did an excellent job getting the, de the texture in the dress. The wrinkles in the dress, oh, that is beautiful. Now, a couple of things that would be really cool and would make it look even better. So you, you would still maintain that artsy feel, but look at the dress over here. See how we've, oh, I'm still translucent. Come on, all the way opaque. Uh, let's go lighter. See how we've got the light coming through right here? I would like to see a little bit more of that. You kind of got it a little bit. Well, this would be out and then down that this is a little bit more angular here and then this would be more out a little bit more so we've got some like if you want to be more realistic you can go a little bit more accurate to the reference photo when it's like a flower i don't put i don't care if the flat the petals are exact if you saw this week's um ink tense lesson with the the rows close is close enough but if you want the want Whenever I'm doing people, that I want to be a bit closer on. So um, things you can watch for. Look at the angle here of the dress. See how this is more flat? It comes down. But it's kind of a more flat look. Whereas on yours, it's just a U. So little things like that you can start paying attention to to get it more accurate. The style, the way that you've shaded this, I think is perfect. I absolutely love that. So it keeps that more artsy feel you're looking for. I like the way you did the grass. I think that's just gorgeous. The, the shading on the bench, absolutely wonderful. Like at, on its own, honestly, it's good how it is, but if you're going for more, you know, you're trying to get it more realistic, those would be some things I would, I would work on. Just start looking at a few little details on stuff. Um, the shading on the shoulders, this has a lot more angles in there. And then we've got our spine and then the shadow there. So you've kind of got our spine, actually, we've got a little bit of detail on there that doesn't need to be there. Um, it's almost a K shape if we look at it from the here, here, and then here more. So if you sometimes when I can, if it looks like something else, it makes it easier for me to look at mine and go, oh, mine doesn't look like a K at all. So that's something that can kind of help. And you're close, you're super close on this. But when I'm working with portraits, like I said, I'll try to go a little bit more. Like her ear shows a bit more here than what you can see. What a pretty photo too, just all around. This is stunning. The art and the photo, I absolutely love. I would definitely hang this on my wall. Um, that is such a cool style. But like you said, you're going for more realistic. So just looking for where things line up. Now, I do like that you have paid attention to like the elbow and that pretty close together. You've got that on yours. But on yours, this, we've got some, uh, the perspective is not quite there because this is real, like this is longer on yours than it is on this one, actually, that's probably part of it. This could come down a little bit. 
which would give you more room for that K in her shoulder blade to, to show. But um, these are just minor, minor things that you can do that will help you to get things to be a little bit more accurate, a little bit more realistic. But, but keeping the sketchy look that you've got, I, I love that. That's one when I do with um, charcoal, I prefer mine to have that more sketchy art C feel too, so I get it. Now the other thing that you can do is turn it upside down. If you put your work upside down, you will notice things that you have, whoops, that's not what I wanted, um, that you have never noticed before. I was gonna make my life not easier. Let's do that again, image. Um, why are you not doing what I want? Oh, cause I'm not looking at the right place. Hmm, that makes sense. 180, there we go. And you, 180. So when we start looking at, get them a little bit closer in size, side by side, it's easier to notice where things could be a little bit different or stand out a little bit more. That light still stands out to me right in here. I don't know why that's standing out so much to me. But um, the lighting, the you could make, the contrast a little bit higher with a lot of a few of the lights in there yeah it's minor things you're so close but when it's upside down now i'm able to certainly see um little things like this can be thinned out a bit straighten that out a, a little bit this shoulder you've got it coming up this way a little bit too much where hers is oops, i'm not drawing this right it's down, like the angle, you would want to flatten that out a bit more. Whoops. You were the one I wanted to redo. Um, but see how right now yours comes up this way, whereas this is a little bit more flat. So these are the little things. They seem minor. They don't seem like a big deal. And they're really not. This is a beautiful piece as it is. But if you can tweak those, that is going to help you more towards gaining that realism that you're looking for. You've done a wonderful job. I think you've got... You, the, the dress, I can see the flow on the dress. Like it looks like you've got the movement there. Like I can see it moving, which is great. So just some minor things. Um, again, we come back to this is just, you, you, now that it's upside down, it's even more obvious how, see how short this is versus how long yours is over here. That's a, a really big difference. Um, and that will give you more room on her back for those um, changes, so. Yeah, minor changes, but minor changes that I think will make a big difference in creating more realism that you're looking for. But yeah, your shading, the looseness, this this softness that you've got up here and here, I love how this just keeps you, it keeps you in the piece. Like you've got that movement going and I love, love, love that. So that worked out really well. Um, yeah, that's what I've got for that one. Okay. Um, next. Okay, we've got uh, puppers here. Very nice. Oh, this is nice. Uh, let me read this really quick. From Melissa, I've been watching your channel for a while now, and your tips have been extremely helpful. Yay, with my art journey with acrylic painting. I know this particular painting is kind of stylized and bright. I'd love to have some feedback on what you would do differently. Thank you, and please give the puppies some love for me. I will. Um, the first thing I want to point out, your pearls look so much more realistic than the pla plastic pearls, the costume jewelry. I love that. You did such a good job. I like the highlights in your eyes. And while this is more stylized, I like it better than the photo by a long shot. Like this is good. Your blues you pulled in there and the purples, I don't have much I would change on this. Um, I must, and even that's iffy if I'm picking things apart. This here, and this is how it is on the photo, but that stands out to me. My eye is drawn to that, like, what's going on with the neck? If it were my painting, I would probably tone it down, even though that is how it is on the photo. I think I might tone that down. Now, if it was a commission, I would check with the client first. I wouldn't 
chop that area off or trim the fur there at all. Um, just sometimes when a dog's sitting in a certain position, it looks weird. It looks normal in a photograph. You accept it as being realistic because it's a photo, but when you do it in the painting, people might look at it and go, that looks weird. So um, we get judged more harshly with the painting, even if it's exact to the photo. But if it's a client's dog, they may not want you to make that change. That may just be what they're used to seeing on their dog. And so it may be worth leaving it as it is. Um, and especially, I mean, you would obviously run into an issue, a situation anyway, because the pearl's sitting so low on the chest, you know, it's, it's down further. So maybe it is better just to leave it as it is. Maybe an alternative would be to soften that a bit. Let's see what happens. I'm just curious. Uh, layer, let's do a new layer. A new layer for me to accidentally undo almost immediately because that is what I do. Um, let's pull a color out of the background. And this may be a way to soften that a bit. Yeah, that'll work. But maybe if we just, I'm almost erasing it because my opacity is too high. That's not necessarily what I want. But if you pulled some of that background a little bit, not, not the, I'm, I'm deleting it. That's not what I meant to do. This is not what my goal there. My goal is to pull some of those colors into that and maybe push it back just a bit so it's not so flat. And that's not a terrible idea anyway to do around some of the edging because right now, he is so separate from that background. You can kind of pull a little bit more of those colors. I'm just playing around. I don't know if I'm going to like this. This is just the thought that I'm like, what would happen if I do this? It's one of the things I like doing um, things in Photoshop so much, I can test them out first. So that might be a way to kind of tone that down if you felt that it needed it. Not necessarily. I don't know. If... It, yeah, I, I think I like it better because it just makes him feel a little bit more or her. Um, feel a little bit more a part of that background. So that would be one thing. This area here, I like your background where it's fuzzy, but I would probably tone the edges down. It's a little bit too crisp for me. So um, we can actually take the same greens basically. But when you do that bokeh look, if we can just soften those edges so it's not quite so harsh. And I mean, that's really what you, we do with the bouquet anyway. We want to take um, the edges. We can have the high contrast, but we want the edges to be a little bit softer so that it's not quite as high I'm here. Because that is kind of pulling away from the face. I, I do have to say I like it. it is, normally, I might say I found that to pull attention away from the dog. It, it, I don't know, it kind of works where it's located. I would soften the edges like I did there, but maybe pull a little bit more green into some of them just to kind of soften that out a little. But I I don't know why, because I, I feel like I shouldn't like something that harsh right in one random location. I mean, I know it's how it is on the photo. I feel like I shouldn't, but I do. I don't know why. I just like, there, like you said, this is a more stylized feel, so I do like it. But I would definitely tone the edges down would be the main thing there. Um, yeah, I would definitely tone the edges down. Because you notice, too, how right here, this, e oh, let's draw on this, come on. Um, this ear feels right in there. That doesn't, it, it's blending too much. I think this is what it is to me. Right now we have the ear and it goes right into that background. And that's a little bit weird because this is the top of the ear. So that is absolutely something that I would do a little bit of a touch up on. Um, pull the green maybe. We can probably do that. If we pulled some of the green into this area, break that up a little bit. So that the ear didn't follow that perfect line. Yeah, that worked. See what a difference that makes? The ear now stands out from that background a bit more. Whereas before, it this just lined so perfectly right down with that color of the background and that was making the ear like kind of it's weird. That is a 100% something I would change. Um, 
that's really the only thing that for certain without a doubt that and I would tone down the bouquet on the burgundy into the green um, just so that transition is soft but that's really it I love what you've done on the face I love the the starkness um, that stylized look is beautiful you did you did such a good job on capturing that stylized look but also realism with it beautiful beautiful work but that background I would just yeah that is my advice um, tone down the magentas. I just had to mess with it for a minute to, to see what, what was not sitting right, but beautiful work. I like the art way better than the reference photo. Cause that's not even a photo. I would have, I would have probably been like, yeah, are you sure that's the photo you want me to work from? Cause that's not a very good photo. Like it's middle of the day, kind of not striking looking. And I think you just took that and really made it better. Okay, we have from Teresa. Let's download this. This is an 11 by 14 pastel mat. Pan pastels on the background. Pit pastels too. Subjects are, uh, the subject and sheep are polychromos. Okay, oh, I didn't pull it on the thing here yet. Um, you and you actually, hold on. I may not pull this. Is this, I'm not going to show this one because it's a hunting. I didn't realize that's a hunting photo. I definitely cannot pull this up on YouTube. That will most certainly bother some folks. So let's not heebie jeebie everyone out. Um, I'll, 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 I'll give you a private um, one for, for you, Teresa, on that one. That would definitely get me some complaints. I am glad I did not pull that up yet. And it's not that I'm anti-hunting, but I know not everyone needs to see the hunting photos. So um, I'm I want to be respectful of that. Okay. So next we have from Hannah. Let me download. Okay, we've got two. Which one do you want to go with? I think I can do them both quickly though. So I kind of want to do them both. Yeah, let's do them both because I think I can do that pretty fast. Famous last words. Oh, water is so boring compared to iced tea. I'm so making iced tea after this. Or maybe it's just the chlorine is not a nice flavor. Okay, you, 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 and you. Um, let's start with this pepper first. So oh, let's switch reference photo to the artwork. So I'm going to pull that up and well, let's read what Hannah said. Thank you for critiquing the previous artwork I said, and I'm especially thankful to learn about using orange as a highlight for red. I didn't know about know that. I'm eager to put it into practice. Yay. Um, and let's see. Uh, there are two and it doesn't say, okay. And if you have time, my aunt's dog, which I did in charcoal. Okay. So this first one is a 12 by 16 Kansas Tens. She asked her, she was asked to edit out the stray hairs on the nose and to tame his ears. So I know those parts aren't identical to the photo. See, this is why I ask you guys what your goals were. I needed to know that, but found his nose to be very hard to get the shape right. Uh, didn't need more highlights and his neck chest similarly lacking to me. Any feedback on how to improve it would be great, especially because I'd like to draw my mom's poodle in charcoal for her birthday. Okay. So the first thing that stands out to me, oh, I see what you changed on the nose. So that, that definitely makes sense. One of the first things that stands out to me is, and you said on the ears too, and to tame his ears. Okay. I would have told her no on the taming the ears. And the reason is that doesn't look like poodle hair to me anymore. And it's a poodle and we want it to look like poodle hair. So sometimes when you do co commissions for people now, trimming the nose on the, the, or the hair over the nose, absolutely, I don't, the groomer messes, missed a spot. So that makes sense to me. But the ears, uh, you, when a poodle's ears are brushed, it's more fluffy fuzzball than long flowing um, Yorkie fur. So that I don't think I would have, um, I think I would have told her no because I'm a jerk like that. But I mean, you did what she asked, but that's certainly a thing. Now, one of the things you want to watch and you started it, like you're getting it, but more so you want to watch the, uh, let's fix these first. 
when you draw the fur, oh, that is really fuzzy and thick. Let's change brushes. There we go. When you draw the fur, look at how, even with this being um, overexposed in this area, look at how we get these curves when it's curly fur and you started it, but you calmed down a little too soon. The, the curly fur are these little weird abstract shapes. And the same thing is with the, the ears. God, that would have looked amazing if you had put that level of detail, because I know she asked you not to, but if you ignored her and took, which I would do, um, this is why I don't take commissions anymore. Um, this is, I, it would look so much more realistic if you followed what the photo had there. Um, but when you do curls, this is what you want to watch is each individual little thing. We've got dark here, dark here, highlight in the middle. So that's typically anyone with super curly hair, person, dog, those are things that you're going to watch. Um, all, all in the head too. I mean, this fur is much shorter and I would work on capturing that look when you do poodle hair. And for me, if the person's dog is still living and they say, I want you to change the fur to look like it was just groomed, I would say, then go groom the dog and take the photo again. That's going to get you the results you're looking for. Um, I'm going to draw what I see. And if you provide me with a photo, if I'm making it up in my head, it's not going to come out as realistic as my other work. So um, that is not something that I would change. I would go with, and the funny thing is, he doesn't look like unkempt minus the fur. What was that grimmer thinking? Um, I'm sorry if your aunt was the one who groomed him. But uh, that is such an odd thing. I've never seen someone leave. If you guys wonder what I'm talking about, look at these hairs that grew over the nose. Like it's such a weird, like someone completely missed that spot. But anyway, um, that just kind of cracks me up. You're good with accuracy. Like I see what you're doing. You're very good in a lot of this, but this is kind of a problem too. That one of the reasons the nose looks a little bit wonky is the part you needed to see is covered by the wonky hairs. So you either need to get another photo that does not have that. So you can see the way that this nose in there, that's not how it would transition. There is like a big finger. Oh, my glasses are super dirty. Heck, maybe I'm going to think your artwork's the best thing I ever saw in a second here. Or maybe I'm going to notice more stuff that I want to fix. Um, oh, I can see. Okay. Um, without that photo, the transition of how that nose should look in here, that's not what it would look like, but you don't have a photo. Go online, find a photo of a poodle that was freshly groomed, and look at the way the fur transitions in that spot. Like, how harsh is that line supposed to be? I think that that will really help. And like right now, see how he curves in here? He shouldn't. We shouldn't have, um, I mean, I need a reference photo, but I know that it doesn't come in like that. So not at that angle. So having a good photo is an absolute must. Um, you've got the skill. You need the photo, though, you know, to, if you're going to copy that exactly. Um, we've got a few areas like in here. Watch this curve. You've got all of these hairs curving out like this. Everything's just kind of that way. It's all going the same direction. What it really should be is all the directions here, whoops, here, in, and then it curves out. We've got fur going this direction. The, it changes all over the place. So when you want to get things to be more accurate, really watch the direction of that fur. And when you're dealing with the curly hair, that I, curly hair, each curl doesn't need to be exact. But you need to capture, I always think of it like a faux finish. I don't need every leaf on the, the tree to look exact to, the, to a real tree. It'll still look like leaves, as long as I'm close. And so I want to capture the look of the fur there. Um, I would have, this actually looks like a fairly old photo, so that would probably be why it actually looks like an older dog with cataracts. Unless it's just the glare. I don't know. So I can understand where if you couldn't get a more a closer photo on that. But I would try as much as possible. Like in this case, let's say somebody brought to me a dog who had passed on and they wanted me to draw it. Do you have any other photos? Like I can do this angle, but do you have any other photos of the fur looking how you want me to make it? I need to see what that would look like. So um, I think you did an excellent job for what she requested, but that's a little, yeah, I would certainly be going for more photos there. We also have, let's see. Yeah, because the way the ear is here, the fur, you've got that good. You're close on the drawing. It's not exact. With por pet portraits, areas like this, I want to see these a little bit more exact. Um, 
you're very close. Not quite. So those are, you know, turn your work upside down. Check that against the reference photo. You will notice things that you just did not notice before. Um, yeah, you can see on the nose here kind of, whoops, I'm throwing in extra lines. I can see through the hair where that would be mostly, but because the hair is coming in front, that's overexposed. So you may not quite hit that angle right just because that whole area is overexposed. Now, one option would have been, well, the highlights. So let's talk about the highlights on the nose. Those are really bright. You can make yours look so, so, so much better by pulling in a uh, layer, new layer. By pulling those highlights, copy what you see on that photo there. So let's go with you and drop you down. So we've got all these highlights here. Whoops, that's not even close to the right color. I don't know why I thought he was pink. Okay, soften that out some. Maybe not that much. Let's tone that opacity down a bit. Nope, that's making it worse. There we go. Pull that highlight like it is on that photo. We're gonna tone that down. We're also gonna pull the highlight in the nose so much. And I am just quickly going through this. Take your time, make yours better. But already, look at the difference from one little, like that would have taken you, what, 30 seconds? I mean, that is a quick, quick thing. I mean, you can go more detailed and get more detail with the little circles on the nose. You did a wonderful job on the eyes. Little things though I would watch for, like um, this comes up a lot higher and that's gonna completely change the expression on the dog's face. So those little details, while each bit of fur does not need to be exact, there are certain things that do, the eyes. Where are the eyes? Where are the shadows hitting on the eyes? If you're a little bit closed on the eye, you will completely change the expression on the subject's face. So that really matters. That's one of those areas we're gonna be really picky on. Um, watch the direction of the hair on the face. We said that. Um, and yeah, I, I would follow the curves and the, the ears. I think you did an excellent job, but I think, and it would have been more work, that's for certain. So at least you, you saved yourself some trouble with that. But like you said, you're gonna do your mom's poodle. Have your mom have that dog groomed exactly how she wants it for the photo when you take your reference photos but if the ears are curly like that oh my gosh it looks so good in the artwork it's tedious but and i understand where your aunt was coming from because she's thinking i wanted to look freshly groomed i get that that doesn't look like poodle hair to me it doesn't look like freshly groomed poodle hair because you didn't have the photo because you didn't have the photo of the dog so anyway i rambled about that enough i think that helps um let's quickly go through the other one the other one looked like it would be a faster one so the other one is Let's see, this is your dog, Bella, which I did in charcoal, it, uh, nine by 12. I kept the collar, but didn't include the leash. I would have done the same. Struggled, especially with the fur on the body and it feels shapeless. Mm, I see where, where you're looking. Let's look at the photo though and see why that's happening. Um, I can hear Matt in the other room doing his weird baby talk to the birds. Nuggets telling him off about something. That's funny. Okay. Yeah, it's missing shading. Really missing shading. So I like where you removed the, I see where you removed the leash, but the choker is why you have this crease in the, the, the when you remove the choker, it looks weird because that is the reason this crease so this crease is happening because of that choker. So I might have kept that in um, if it were me because it just makes it make sense. Um, let's see, we've got this part of the collar. So I see where you took that out. We're missing, oh, I see. I think you were looking more at this when you did the chin because you made it come out and the tongue, the chin is like, not down like that like it, it's chopped a little bit weird it almost looks like you looked at this and com you combine those two shapes um when you were doing that so i don't know i might you know i said i might take out the leash now that i'm looking at it i might not have taken out the leash um and anyway plus those uh the hooks on the leash the what are they called the little question mark hooks i, I can't think of the name right now they Drawing anything metal like that, I would hype up the me metal contrast and it looks so good. It may, it's one of those things like when I do um, 
pictures of horses, I always hope that the client wants the halter on them because the metal rings look so good. They're so easy to make look good, but they, they like elevate the piece so much more. So if I can keep metal in a piece, I want it there because it is easy to make metal look good and it just, it helps. So yeah, that, um, your darks need to be a lot darker. I mean, when you get into these areas, that would make such a difference in the values. It just darken all of that up, like get those shadows deeper and it gives you more dimension. Not all of it. Like I'm not saying take every shadow you've done and make them evenly deeper. I'm going in on the deepest portions and look how now it just looks like just that little bit, how it starts looking like that. There's just already just so much more dimension in there. Wait, and I just barely did anything. You've got your black charcoal pencil. You could fix that quickly. The next thing is that the teeth are way too white, like way too white for being that much in shadow. I would certainly pull those way down, way less than that. Create, get some shadow in there, push those into his mouth. And then some of them are gonna be a little bit darker than others as it fades back especially on the underside of the teeth. You don't want them right now. They're all even. Um, darken some of this up. So it's really just get some of the darks a little bit darker. This is way too white, way too white in here. We've got a definite shadow in here. Start pulling those, those darks in and it, it's going to create a lot more dimension on the work. This whole area is just really dark, so let it be dark. I mean, you can see, I can sit here and mess with this forever, but you can see we're already getting a big, big difference in get those dark, your lights are light enough. Your darks are not dark enough. Whoops, that's not what I meant to do. Ah, that's what happened. Nope. That's what I meant to do. Okay. So the, just a few little changes and you start getting dimension. And I could sit here for another hour and perfect all of that, but obviously we don't have time for that. But yeah, your darks need to be dark enough in a lot of these areas is going to be the big thing um, that I would do differently. Okay. Have a hibiscus next. Let me get these pulled up. Oh, that is a pretty hibiscus. Very nice. My mom has hibiscus. That's one of very few things I miss about living in Southern California. You can get hearty hibiscus here, but it's just not the same. Okay, so this is from, uh, let's see, Kent. So this is a painting of a hibiscus flower from our backyard. I added some green leaves to the right side to try to balance the picture. My big question is how to decide what background color should be used to help the flower pop. For that matter, any kind, uh, any of the main item, main item in a painting that you would like to pop. Okay. So what I am going to do is show you what I would do to choose you did a great job. I would get my darks darker. It's going to be my big thing. My light's a little bit lighter. My darks a lot darker would be, come on, mouse, where are you? Um, my first thing. And the next thing I'm going to do, and I don't know, this doesn't always work. Let's find out. Let's see. We're going to try something. Good enough. We're going with it. So what I, this is how I decide what background is going to look good. It's not something like, well, if I do these colors, I'm always going to choose this background. I usually keep a folder on my computer of different backgrounds. So let's, let's try some stuff out. Um, I don't have a lot of backgrounds in that folder. That is not what I was looking for. Um, documents, background thumbnail. Sure, this isn't what the way I would do it, but this gives us an idea. I can find any photo. Maybe I want to know what it would look like with a blue sky behind it. Maybe I want whatever it is or just colors. Let's say, what if I just want to see what different shapes would look like? I'm going to pull this in there. And this is before I ever start the painting. I spend time doing this and say, okay, do I like how that looks? 
no, I really don't like how that looks. So let's try making some adjustments to the curves, to the color, the hue and saturation. Let's start with curves. I'm thinking darker would be better. Heck, black and white would probably be amazing. Well, let's see what, what it looks like with this. And yours is a square. Let's make ours a square too. Um, just so we're a little closer. And now I can, obviously you would put your green leaves in there, but I can start messing with that. Let's go with, let's start with hue and saturation. I can see what tint, do any of these look, I kind of like the blue better. I don't like those obviously, don't look good. Oh, that's horrid. The purples, I think purples look nice. Purples and blues are kind of pretty. So I kind of like those, but what if we made, made it darker and black and white? So this, I mean, and I'm not saying I'm gonna find the perfect thing. This is just what I do when I'm trying to find out, black and white does stand out a lot, when I wanna find out what would look good. Or I can go layer, um, let's do a new layer fill, solid color. What if I just painted this on gray paper? Looks pretty good. Throw that in there and then that would look kind of, I like the gray. The gray makes that, if you want it to pop, dark gray is definitely an option for you. So that's just what I do when I'm trying to decide what I want. The other thing would be, let's see, I could actually take in this case, let's go with the original. Whoops, no, don't do that. Let's pull that into the background. Oops, let's fix what I just did. Nope, that is not the same size. Whatever, I can put what's in the background there and decide, well, what if that's just really dark? You know, I just play around with different ideas until I find something that I like the look of. So just a muted version of that background. Or this kind of looks cool with a box behind it and two different colors. I mean, I just mess with it until I find something that I like the look of. For me, I'm a fan of gray, so I would probably go with the dark gray to make that flower really stand out or mute some of those colors. What's happening right now is because you're using the same purples, you know, you've got pinks in here and the purples and they're very, very close, especially when you get down into here. And so it, it's not, it is balanced, it looks good, it's pretty, but if you're looking to make it really stand out, try something a lot darker, something that's just not as there and then I would all that would also allow you to go darker to get the highlights around the edges of the flower I think it's really important to make those a lot dark make the highlights around the edges lighter make the center a lot darker so that that gives you a little bit more three-dimensional of a look within this so for mine dark in the background dark in the center get highlights a little bit better and darken even in here when you get into this area all of that, look how dark you can go. I mean, really dark, and that's gonna make your outer edges stand out. Because right now we're all kind of mid-range. It's not standing out that much, it's not popping because you just don't have the contrast there yet. You hype up the contrast on that flower, even the background, if you left it as it is, the flower's gonna pop a lot more. But because you you played it safe with mid-range, look how dark. I mean, this is, let me do this, because I haven't made one of these yet. And it's not that you need to copy your reference photo exactly, but it will make a difference. Um, I don't need that. Never. Okay, look at how dark the darkest area of your back, the inside of that flower should be. And you only have a little bit of a dark and it's a lot lighter than that. I mean, that needs to be, that's almost black. Like it's not black, but it is dark, deep, deep burgundy. And then your main mid-range tone, like the darkest color, but not the darkest, darkest, is that yours is a lot lighter. So those are, look at um, the edge of the flower. Look at that orange. Yours is again, a lot lighter. And it's not that yours isn't pretty, but it's flat because you're missing, you don't have the dark areas dark enough which means your light areas just don't stand out enough. They can't, no matter how light you make, actually your light areas are probably light enough, but even if you made them white, they're never gonna feel light enough because what's next to them is too light. If that, so yeah, that is 
my advice for this one. Show off for telling me that hibiscus is in your yard. I'm a little bit jealous. I'm not bitter at all. Okay. California just gets some really, really cool plants that you guys can keep that I cannot keep here. Okay. Um... This is Monica from Switzerland, so let me download this, who is most likely asleep right now, according to her email. Don't blame you. I want to be asleep right now, too. Uh, let's see. You and where did the photo go? Okay, it's almost black and white. There it is. Color was confusing me. Oh, he's cute. Okay. And let's see what she says about this. The painting is a combination of an outline charcoal for the body and pencil for the face and watercolor. The colors are cooler in the image than in reality, but I was not able to adjust that. The size, did you want to? See, that's what I need to know. Did you want to adjust it? The size is about six by eight and a quarter inches and it's on a rough arches watercolor paper using charcoal for the outline was an experiment and other paintings i used ink for the outline but i wanted the outline less dark and a medium that would make it hard to include much detail uh, i like realism but i am not interested in photorealism i'm working towards simplified or sketchy realism that transports the essence of the mood or maybe it's a form of illustration I'm always struggling to find the right degree of simplification. In this case, the tail was the most difficult because it was so fluffy with the masses of hair. I found it difficult to simplify so that it matches the level of detail in the rest of the image. I know this is not your style, but I'm still interested to know which parts of the painting work for you and where you see parts that do not fit to be changed. And then the reference photo came from Unsplash. Okay. Values. Um, I like what you've got on the head. With tans, pulling magentas and purples would look really good on this. You'd still keep it stylized. And I see where you're going with the keeping it stylized. So I get that. But you can keep it simplified and still get really interesting color and values. You're not depending on detail. You're depending completely at that point when you're doing something stylized like this. It matters more than ever that you get your values in there. Because somebody who does photorealism but isn't great at values, if they've got enough detail, can kind of be excused a bit. When you're going more stylized, doesn't get excused. You have to have those values. It is so much more important. One of the really good things, and everyone can do this exercise, have a sketchbook, break down, let's say you have a little like, I don't know, an eight by 10 sketchbook or five by seven, something small, break it into smaller sections. So each section's maybe two, three inches wide max. Now you paint your landscape in that. Paint a scene, paint, paint your, your squirrel, paint it tiny, tiny. This is the sort of thing that is such good. And in the, for this art, for Monica, 100% you need to start. If this is your style, this is how you start developing this better. You paint tiny, 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 because you can't get that detail in there. You are solely dependent on the colors you choose and your values, not the detail. And this is going to help you to develop that style better. And the great thing is you're going to do it quickly. You've got six little panels on one sheet. You should be able to get that done in 20 minutes. You just got six pieces of practice done in 20 minutes. And because you're not focused, you can't focus on detail. It's not there. You are trying to create that. And this, it's easier, I think, if you start this style. It's less frustrating anyway. If you start by doing it in doing landscapes, because I think it's a little bit more forgiving. Flowers, it's a little bit more forgiving. I don't think I would start trying to learn that for the average person. Now, you're already, you've been doing animals, so maybe you can go ahead and keep doing that anyway. I see what you did with the charcoal. I like that. I think I'd like ink more, but you're right. You Then you're back into the detail. I just like the line work of the ink. Um, this is a cool look, and you did good getting darks, but I'd like to see even more. You are more dependent than anybody else. Watch on the tree. If you oversimplify, the lines just look like little wormies. Like, there's some worms. That's what it looks like to me. Um, so watch that when you do bark. I would definitely, even with simplifying it, kind of, oh, let's bump that up a bit. I would still, you know, kind of pull those up so you don't have little worms. We don't want worms there. Um, there, 
they don't fit. Um, so that's one thing to watch because we definitely have that going on right now with just quick squiggles. So you're almost, it's almost like what you were saying, you're, you're still trying to form the detail. Don't do it. Do you, you know, you've got that sketchy look, pull them down. Don't, 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 well, that, well, I don't know what that was. Um, don't do that either, but, um, break up the worms, turn it into actual bark. Um, or put less in there, I don't know. But definitely more contrast, absolutely more contrast. Violets, anytime I'm using those orangey browns, violets, almost every time, it looks wonderful. You can get some blues into the white around the face, you need shadows. I mean, this side is hitting the highlight, over here you've got the shadow. So that needs to be captured in this style. You're not doing detail, you have to get that lighting in there. And I would do whatever your photo has, hype it up even more. It's gonna make it look a lot better. Um, I think you, so the tail is an interesting thing because the way you've got it drawn is not much different than what's going on up here. And it ha, it's like an unhappy potato. So definitely that is something, I'm not sure what the solution is there, but this doesn't work with this. If this wasn't there, if we, I'm pointing and you can't see, let's, let's actually do something really quick. Let me. If this was not here, I don't think it would bother me as much. I mean, obviously something needs to be there, but that tail doesn't look like a tail with that part. It's kind of like weird potato pancake thing. Like they, this and this match too much, but they're not the same. They shouldn't even be close to each other. So that is one thing you're gonna have to, I'm not sure what the solution is because this is not my style. I can just point it out and go, ooh, what the heck is he, is he under a blanket? Could be a blanket, turn it into a blanket. I would like that better. But anyway, so those are my tips. Um, take that as you will, but I think everyone can really benefit. Get a sketchbook, and I need to start doing this myself too, because it's honestly fun. And you're just doing these little tiny studies and you're only focusing on lighting. Because you can do detail, do a landscape, and you, you know, a hint of where those trees are, a hint of whatever it is, but you're, you're going to teach yourself in order to make those look good. And your first ones are gonna look terrible. Don't give up, because it's gonna take you a month or so, at least, to start getting good at that. Do not be frustrated in the beginning. But do that often enough, and you will start seeing those improve, and that improvement you can take into your bigger pieces because you're perfecting your lighting so much more. It's not just your values, it's also gonna be your colors. You can get these bold, bright colors in these super tiny little things. It, it's helpful, okay. Next, we've got Lily and a Cardinal. And one of these days, I'm gonna send Lily the portrait of George. I did just get, if you're watching Lily, I got, finally, I ordered, I had to order the 16 by 20 mats because he's big. So the outside edge is 16 by 20, he is 11 by 14. Finally got the mats in and literally I should say, it didn't take long for them to get here. I finally ordered the mats because this was actually my failure, not like ship, it didn't get lost in shipping or anything. I'm making it sound like it's not my fault. Oh no, it is mine. But yes, I need to get that matted and shipped to you. Um, hopefully soon. Everyone knows I am really slow at getting stuff shipped. Ask my mom how long it takes me to send her presents. Um, like Christmas, Mother's Day, we'll just combine them into one box because it's taken me that long. I sent you a photo of what you're getting. Um, okay. Oh, he's cute. So let's shrink you down. I like him. Let's see what your goals were. Okay, Lily says, 8x10 colored pencil with a watercolor base. Reference photo I took of a female cardinal, but I wanted to do a male, so I winged it. Did I make it work? Should I have tried the details and the tail feathers? I did burnishing instead of OMS. I'm still struggling with OMS. When I try OMS backgrounds, I end up throwing the half of, the, half of them away. Why? I need to see what you're doing. Lily, if you are willing, send me a video of what is going wrong with your thing and I can make a video response to that. What is going wrong with the OMS in the backgrounds? Because I bet it's something that if I can see what you're doing, I can solve this for you because OMS is fabulous. I mean, you can burnish too, that's fine. But yeah, there's certainly some trouble with the burnishing we're gonna talk about now. Um, PLs, do, do everyone else first since this is my third time? No, um, we're, we're, I'm gonna get to everybody. We're just gonna break it up into two weeks. Okay. 
So, so don't submit anything else at this point. I, I'm, I'm full for next week too. Okay. Um, I'm getting water on my tablet. So, oh, hold on just a second. Why did, make sure these texts are not, oh, I'm missing from Nick. Hold on. Did I get stuff from, can I make the artwork a bit larger on the screen? Oh, that probably came in a long time ago. Um, how not large is it? No, not totally because I'm taking up the whole screen already to have both. So not, wait, not easily. Um, did, was it bigger last week? What did I do that I'm not doing that right? Um, oh, we got one more critique. And Lisa Clark, we'll fit you in for next week too. Okay, after that, nobody else. Um, I can make it a little bit bigger. I'm trying to have, I guess you don't need to see the color because I've pulled up that box. So let's see if I can stretch this out a little bit more. Um, let's pull you off so you guys won't be able to see that anymore, but I don't think you need to. And now I can make those a bit bigger. Unfortunately, when I'm on this computer, it's really hard for me to see when I get messages. Um, like, would you think two monitors, I'd be easier. It is not. I, okay, anyway, moving on. So, Yes, more detail, more lighting. So I know you wanted to make it a male, which I like. I would have too. However, I want to get a photo of a male cardinal so I can see where the details are and the highlights because right now he's very, very flat. So there's a couple things that I want to see different. Um, one that I'm seeing point, uh, let's see. If I look at your background, because of the way you burnished, I can see, oh, am I not on here right? Nope. I can see the direction of your brush, your pencil strokes are really messy. And this is all nice and soft. Did you start here? It almost makes me wonder, did you start in this zone? Because then when you got into these, it started going in different directions all over the place. Like I can see all of those brush strokes. And that's one of those things that I try to avoid or pencil strokes as much as possible. Um, look, we made him look more artsy. I try to avoid that as much as possible. So that's my first thing that we need to work on. And that is going to come from one. It depends on which pencils you used. Hold on. I think you said you were working with polychromos, right? Let me see. Um, colored pencil with watercolor didn't say. So depending on the pencils you used, you may watch some of my tutorials and I do things super, um, whoops, go back. I do things super messy with my pencils and it still comes out super smooth. The reason I can do that are Derwent, uh, Derwent Lightfast and Derwent Drawing Pencils. Any other pencil, I cannot be that sloppy. So that's why in the, the videos, I usually will bring that up. If I am, if I go in every which direction and I can see my pencil strokes with those two brands or two types of pencils, they will blend out with OMS. If I do that with Polychromos, if I do that with Caran d'Ache, less so, but you'll still see it, you will see my lines. So if I'm using those pencils, and if you are using Derwent Drawing or Derwent uh, Light Fast, it's still doing this, then this tip would also go towards you. Little circles, little overs, oh, oh, overs, what? I'm tired. Ovals, um, little circles and overlap it so that there are no pencil strokes at all. Now this is minor, it's not super strong on here, but it is something that I, it's an easy fix. It takes way more time. Dear God, I hate doing backgrounds in color and pencil. Like I kind of like it because, you know, I'm a masochist. But yeah, it's a, it's, mm, it, it's a challenge with some of the pencils. Little circles, overlap, light layers, and now this it comes back to using OMS. With burnishing, same thing, the little circles and overlap. But you've got to have that consistency, otherwise you end up being able to see all of those pencil strokes. So we want to try to avoid that. Now, the detail that you did in the tail, you're a little bit too defined here going through there. Like they, there are more lines. I would rather see just more shape and shadow. So here, actually let's layer. Okay, you use polychromos, there you go, that's why. 
with polychromos, you can't be sloppy like I, I can with your, and I love polychromos, don't get me wrong, they're a wonderful pencil, but they are the most fussy for backgrounds. They are my least favorite to use on backgrounds. Sometimes I do use them because they just have a color I want in that background. But if I can use my first choice for a background, if I want something to be smooth, it's always going to be Derwent Drawing, then Derwent Lightfast. If those aren't my option, care, like if I, the color isn't available there, Karen Dosh Luminance is my next. My last choice is going to be polychromos for the background. No, of course, for detail, then polychromos is going to, you know, kind of take the place of everyone else. I'm going to flip everything around. But um, yeah, that would be that. So now look at the details. We've got this gold, the brown tones. Even on a male cardinal, don't they have some details like that? This is not the right brush. Um, hold on. I have cardinals on my computer somewhere. Let me see. What detail do we have? We can actually just use this as an, an example because I did pull one up. Oh, whoops. No, go back. Computer's working on it, thinking about it. Mm, got cardinal fish. That's a tetra. That did not give me what I wanted. Um, I put it in the group challenge. Let's look there. Let's see if I put that in the right place. Probably not. It was on unsplash. Um, maybe I put it under maybes. It was a recent group challenge. I know there was a male cardinal. Actually, you'll work. Let's open you. Now, the thing that I like so much about this, what I would do if I were you, because I love your photo, I love your angle. I totally get why you would choose to, oh, I need to draw this. This is from Unsplash. That is a beautiful photo. But look at the different colors in this guy. Look at how much we have with, well, one, the glow. And you can pull that glow on yours too. Those yellows, oh my gosh, those are so pretty. Um... I would look at that for where the highlights are. But even when we get into the body, it's not flat red. Everything right now is flat red, so it gives you that very cartoony look. But to make it look more realistic, we want to pull in those, well, the brighter colors. Go lay down. Get. Wade, go lay down. Gibson, go lay down. Um, where we want to pull in those brighter, I mean, that is like a yellow, yellow on the chest there, fading into oranges. When we get into the back, uh, where did I have that little box? Look at the color of the back. It's like eh, kind of a put mortem with some white, maybe something along those lines. Those tan cinnamon, some of those colors um, would work. Um, there's a lot of them. They used to be light flesh. I forget what they call it light, now, light and dark flesh. Those colors, I would pull some of those in there. And honestly, for me, I would even pull some light blues in there. If you, especially if you've got any. Um, any wax based pencils, the light blue, so it would show up more. But I would put some of those in there. Whereas right now with yours, they're all the bright red. Now the bright red is easy to tone down. What if I wanted to work on this one more and fix that? Like there's the background, you're not going to smooth out. The lines are there. We're, we're, we're going to pretend it was on purpose. So, but the rest of the bird, so you burnished it. That does limit what you can do, but you can take the fat. Do I have one in here? The fabric has still, no, I don't have it. Um, perfection eraser. It's kind of like an ink eraser, and that is going to pull out enough off the feathers. They're still going to be red. You're not going to get rid of the red. It's not going to bring the paper back to white, but it'll pull up enough that more pencil can stick on top. And it's not as good as the original paper, but it's better than, you know, if you've already burnished, that's really the only way you're going to get anything over it. But pull some of that up and put some of these other colors in there. That gives you more of an opportunity to get these, all of this in there. Um, into the tail, look at the, the we've got, again, with these, these more muted mob type colors. Mob, that's the word I'm looking for. Um, but if you get those in there, it makes the red look brighter where it's supposed to be. So around the face, um, as we get into the, the other areas of the body. So I would work more on getting more values right now. If you do like, that's a good red, you chose a good color. And this is a great example when everyone, you know, I'll do tutorials and people are like, well, I need to know the exact color. What colors are you using right there? I don't know, I've got a handful of pencils all the time. I can't tell you the exact color, but let's say I could. Let's say I could tell you, you how to get the perfect cardinal red. You did that. You achieved the perfect cardinal red, but that's a cartoon. It's, you know, 50 different, well, maybe not 50. Um, maybe I would do on him at least, let's see, I would do that cream color, I would do yellow, I would do a 
definite like orange, apricot orange. I would do scarlet red. I would do a mauve color. I would pull in some ultramarine-ish type blues in there, layer that in there. I would definitely be pulling purple, like a deep dark purple or nightshade and night shade, so I'll probably use both. So now I'm up to eight, that is a weird way to hold my fingers, eight um, black, I would definitely pull. This is the weirdest way to count fingers. I don't know what is wrong with my brain, right? This is what happens when you don't have tea. That is what I'm blaming. Um, so now I'm up to what, eight, nine? Because it's hard to, this is not how you make counts. That's a lot of colors. There's no one right. I want a bunch of different colors, so I get that variation in there. I think that him, if it were me, hmm, I actually want to know what, I think I know what's going on. If you're using polychromos, you just need to do smaller circles. But as far as what's going on with the OMS, I'd love to see what's not going on right there. Um, if you can pick up some Derwent Light Fast, that's going to make your life so much easier for your backgrounds. For And with OMS like that, it just plays so, like the difference with Derwent Light Fast and OMS and the difference with polychromos and OMS, they're, they, it's such an obvious difference between those two pencils. And that is not to bash polychromos. We all know they're one of my top my top favorites. Um, that and Derwent Light Fast are like my top two. But yeah, I, I think a little bit more depth would make a big difference there. Um, and slow down. One feather at a time. Not like one feather start to finish at a time. If you're trying to make it look more realistic, one feather whole thing shaded, move on to the next. Now that doesn't mean you might not come back to that feather and make some touch-ups once you get the next ones in there. But if you focus on one, you're gonna find that you get way more realistic than if you're kind of, like in this case, it, it would be very easy just to fill it all in red, you know, one big batch. You've got your detail in there accurately. So I think just working on our values a bit more, getting a few more colors in there so it's not so solid one color. And that's gonna be the same thing with the branch. The branch looks great, the, is it bamboo? Um, whatever he's sitting on looks great. The leaf could use some work. Definitely needs some more darks in there. Uh, but I love the way that you got the sh shading, the lines. See, the sketchy lines with polychromos were perfect for that. So polychromos are not, they're, they're just stronger with some things than with other things. Um, so yeah, those are my tips and definitely small little oval, small little circles and overlapping to get that softer look. But his Ooh. highlighting on, oops. His highlighting on his eye, his eye is, you did, that eye looks so, like it looks better than the photograph. It looks better than the photograph I have pulled up for my photo that I want to draw. Like you did the pulling the blues and the purples, the feathers around that, you did beautiful, like perfect. But the rest of it, we can use some more depth and I think that will improve it. Hold on one second, somebody's ringing the bell. If one of those dogs wants out and Matt's asleep, I have to have someone. Oh, good, you got them. If so, if a dog rings the bell, that means they have to go outside. So I am not going to mess around with what would happen if I didn't let them outside if somebody's ringing the bell. No one should need to go out right now, but okay. Okay. Next. Um, come on, where's my mouse? When you have too many screens, the mouse is very confused. So we've got Fly Me to the Moon. Um, I don't need that open. I need this open. And let's see. AKA Elaine. I don't know. Should I know that? I don't think I knew that. Uh, attached is a, a watercolor fantasy. I know it needs a horizon line, but not sure how or where to do it. Any or all suggestions welcome. Thank you so much for all you do. You're welcome. Okay. Doesn't need a horizon line. I don't know. So this one's a little bit harder for me because this is definitely one you look at it from a distance. This is not an up close piece. I am. I like the colors that you used and the way that they overlap. Like you did a good job. The colors you used, you could have so easily made an ugly, muddy mess, and you didn't. I don't have a lot of tips for you because. Mm, maybe a little more shading under the birds. This is fantasy. If I don't have a reference photo, you know, I can't really judge based on realism. But as far as being fantasy and soft, I really do like a lot about this. I might make some of these darks. And see, I give this advice, but let me tell you, it would be so easy to screw this up and just have mud. 
Um, but what if, let's find out, I don't know, it may be the worst idea I ever had. We took some of these darker blues, like that indigo kind of color, and I'm wondering if we pulled a bit more with the darks, maybe a little more than that. If we pulled a little bit of the blues up here, we might be able to get a little bit more depth in some of this. Actually, this should be more translucent too. I might see a little bit of a shadow under here. You could probably pull, no, that line is terrible. A few little ripples in the water. You've gotta be very careful with something like, I mean, this is just kind of soft and I don't have a lot to add. Ooh. Um, I shouldn't sit like this. This is one of the ways that I make my knees go out of joint. That would be fun to do live. Um, that's always fun to try to get back in socket. But anyway, um, yeah, I think we could go a little bit more on some of this. Like just pull a little bit more blue and maybe block it in some, but not too much. I mean, this is, and even the changes I'm doing are just kind of minor. Again, no reference photo. There's not a lot I can go with on that without seeing kind of where you were going with it. This has a very nice softness to it. It's just a, oh, I can never say that. A re, <sighs> ethereal. God, that was hard for me before. Ethereal um, look to it, which I kind of like. So the movement of the birds, I like it. I don't have a lot. Again, I don't have a reference photo to compare it to. I might just darken a little bit on the edges. It's kind of page blockers to keep you in more, but what you've got works. I don't know. I think I would let the horizon, I, I think I would just let it fade out the way you've done. Um, that could get very weird very quick if it's too defined there. I don't know. I don't have a lot on that one without a reference photo. So those are, those are my tips for that. But I think it is very pretty. Yeah. Um, would you add more twiggies? No, I don't think so. Eh. You might be able to do a few up front. You know what would be neat on something like this? Because I don't think, you know, this style isn't going to take terribly long. It would be kind of neat to see you do, like, take a sketchbook, block your page off into four quadrants, and try, to, try the same image four different ways, making minor changes on each one. Do a quick study like that, and then see what you, you, you know, when you keep doing that same thing over and over again, when you're working on something like this, that you don't have that definite reference photo, you're really not sure, like, should I do branch? I don't know. I would do, I would, I would do small studies of the same thing and you don't have to get the same amount of detail, but get it, give yourself an idea. Do I like it better? What if I had some of these brighter orange flowers up front? Then you realize, oh, that totally drew attention away from the birds and I hate it. But you can try a bunch of things very quickly and this is also going to improve your, your skill level. So it kind of goes back to two, what I was talking about before with the other um, one where you're doing so many small studies, you're very, very quickly learning to depend on your lighting and your values versus detail. You're not depending on detail. You, I mean, you've got some detail here, but I think that that advice I would give for something like this too, especially if you're working more out of your head, don't have a lot of reference photos, I think that that's going to help you strengthen that. But that said, that exercise I'm talking about where you take a landscape and you know you do a, several landscapes and, and keep it very simple, a little like two by four inch landscapes or whatever, um, get a reference photo for those. Don't just do that from your head. You, that's not gonna, that's, that's not the best exercise. For the exercise of, of those, get some reference photos that you're quickly going through. And don't get reference photos. Let's say you're doing something middle of the day. Don't get your boring reference photos that were taken in the middle of the day. Get reference photos of landscapes, of flowers, early morning where the sun is striking, where it's really low and you just get the, the definite shadows because that's what you're looking for. That's what you're looking to improve on. So we don't want middle of the day, like someone went to the Grand Canyon and like there's no shadows because the sun's right above. No, that's not gonna be, that's not gonna help you learn to do those things. So by doing those constantly, when you do then want to do something that's a bit more out of your head, you don't really have a good reference photo, you've got the experience of this looked good or that looked bad and you can then apply it to this. And then with something like this, I would still do the same thing, break up a sketchbook into like four quadrants and do a, do a few samples and say, should I put more twigs? Do I think twigs will look good? Well, on this little sample that I'm going to spend maybe an hour on, I'm going to try that. Nope, didn't like it. Or, oh my gosh, it looks amazing. So that is what I, that's the advice I would give you for improving that. But be careful 
you did, I'm impressed you didn't go muddy, like super muddy on this. This has a very pretty flow with the colors you've got, which can be very difficult to do. It, it would have taken one wrong splash of green or one wrong splash of that blue hitting the, the yellow to make the ugliest thing you have ever seen. So you, you did good. You didn't do that, but be careful of that. <laughs> These are, it is so easy with what you've done. So I'm impressed that you, I'm really impressed you didn't turn this into mud, that this is actually very visually appealing. Okay. Um, next. Hey, tap water. Mm, chlorine or chloramine. I'm not sure what my city uses. Um, it doesn't taste good. I can tell you that. Maybe I just need to change the water filter. Oh, I probably should do that. Moving on. Uh, let's see. That's probably what that blink on my fridge is doing. Um, flower. Where's the other one? Where's the reference photo? There it is. Okay. I want to use this really quick as an example, what I was just talking about with finding interesting lighting when you do those studies. This flower is so a perfect example of that. That definite, like overexposed highlight, like it is so overdone. Perfect. That is going, that's the sort of thing you want to look for when you're looking for doing those little studies because you've got that striking lighting and that is what you're going to be working on. Okay, let's go back to this one. So this is Yellowbird, um, Deb F. Let's see, see, she said, see what I can, uh, see what I can do to improve. I, is this not scrolling right? I guess that is what it said. That email is, it looks like it's not showing me all the email. What is going on with my computer? Um, see what I can do to improve. Looks kind of plain, pan pastels and colored pencils. Wasn't sure how to go about brightening the sun, brightening the sun on petals. Oh, the sun. I should read the whole thing. A uh, bit different than reference photo. Uh, let's see, in tablet lenses. <laughs> okay. So the big thing here is a lack of contrast. So I'm not worried if the reference, oh, we are definitely at a different angle too. So let's change. Where is this? You get to turn. Edit image. Rotate clockwise. Oh, hey, I picked it right. It's kind of like remembering my left and my right. I don't know. Um, let's see. Oop, throw the remote. Okay. Yeah, so normally with red, I often say don't use white as your highlight because you get pink. But in this case, that actually works because the, the sun is so, like the photographer let that area be so overexposed, but it's actually really pretty, so I'm good with it. Um, white, lots of white. Like that is darks darker, lights lighter. Your drawing is, oh, the little butterfly. I just noticed him. He's cute. Um, this is great. I love it. I love this sketchy style. Like I don't necessarily feel... Uh, if you're going for more realism, yeah, we want to clean up those edges and make them nice and sharp. But this has a really pretty soft feel to it too that I really like. I would probably sharpen up a little bit more on the center area in here. But um, other than that, I didn't put anything on there, did I? Okay. Um, it's really about getting those darks darker and those lights lighter. So I accidentally closed this a minute ago, so now I have to make a new one. New. Layer, layer fill, solid color, okie dokie. Now, just to show you, like you've got this nice mid range, which is a very, you did a good job picking your colors here, but let's look at the darks. I mean, let's go a lot darker. We don't have any, oh wait, no, you do have the dark. You're actually pretty close there. That's not that far off, but you don't have the darks on the inside of the flower, which means the yellow on the inside doesn't stand out enough. The white for the center of the flower does not stand out enough because the darks next to it aren't dark enough. So that's going to be my first step. The next thing, watch, this gets scary. Um, it is absolutely normal to think that's going to be too bright. I'm kind of afraid to do that. The, uh, what do I have? That would not have worked, 
There we go. Um, see how this line, oh, that color does not show up at all. Let's try that again. Let's go with aqua. Do you show up? Yay. See how defined this shadow is? That's scary. That is like, wow. But that's what makes that striking. You've got to be, it's scary. It looks like it's way too much. It is not. That, that is what, when you get to a point where you're comfortable getting those bright lights in there, you will take your work from being good to being amazing. Um, so let's see, we've got, okay, there's our lights. Let's start with our darks. So if we just come through, actually, let's do a new layer, a new layer. Yes. And let's not make it that dark. Okay. If we come through and start, which brush, oh, that's why. I'm just gonna take a few of these spots. I don't care if they're exact, but we're just gonna start darkening this and adding. I'm not working on the same thing that I'm supposed to be working on. What happened in that layer I thought I made? Did I make it on the wrong one? Undo, 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 undo. Layer, you are getting the layer. Layer, new, ah, layer, new, layer, new. There we go, my God. Okay, I probably hit undo one too many times. Okay, now we're going. So let's start pulling some of those. And watch, I'm just doing the, a really quick job. I'm not going for accuracy because I'm not spending the time on that right now. But just watch what happens when I start building this up. What a difference. Like you drew, your drawing is fine. It's just not finished. And I would do this on the little petally, or you know, the buds. I would do this on everything. Uh, and then we get into here. So that's actually very close to the color you already have, so we won't mess with that. Let's jump into this. This is where it starts getting scary. I'm not blending nice because again, we're just going to quickly go through this. See, look at that color. I just erased that. The color was fine. The color next to it was not light enough. Therefore, that part I just erased didn't show up. So going over this, it was just white um, and let it blend in so that you get the pink. Well, a lot of this ends up being actually very white. You've got parts of this. And then we're going to have the same thing up in here. We start getting these brighter colors. Get the brights brighter, the darks darker. That stays a lot darker. Um, but we start getting a lot more, let's see. That, this is gonna be a little bit difficult when you get into the pan pastels and colored pencil because you've already got so much red. So getting that yellow might be a bit more challenge than it's worth. I might not bother with that. I would probably just go a little bit darker with the reds. Um, just knowing the challenge that is if it's already that dark. But if you can start, oh, that's too much. Um, Strength is way too high. I'm just gonna smudge some of that in there. But getting that little bit of highlights, like let those be bold. And I don't have anywhere near enough. That certainly needs more all over the place. But it starts giving you an idea of what can happen just by putting in those highlights. And again, mine is super rushed. Take your time, spend several hours on that, but get those brights way, way brighter and your work will look so much more three-dimensional. It's weird. Those are weird, bizarre, abstract shapes that make no sense when you're doing it. It's like, that's not a flower. What the heck? Did that? Why? That's just what it looks like. You just have to trust those abstract shapes. 
work upside down, even with the flower. So when you take your photo, it will always mess with my head. Just flipping it. I can be doing a fish and I'll flip it. So it's, it's going the other direction. And my brain's like, whoa, what? That doesn't look right. Any like, it looks weird, but that's the thing. Your brain saw it the one way and it instantly thinks it knows everything. And it knows exactly what that fish looks like. And you flip it the other direction and you notice things you didn't know. It's the, it's not even upside down. It's just facing the opposite direction. So you, these, these are all these little tricks we have to do to our, for our brain to get it to see what's really there. And even with a flower, or turning it upside down can help you not just notice the detail, but also notice the values, the things that need to be lighter or darker. But that is going to make all the difference in the world in your work if you can start getting those darks darker and those lights lighter. The drawing is fine. I think the, like you simplified it in a way that works, just darks darker, lights lighter. Okay. Let me do one more and then the rest will be tomorrow or not tomorrow, not tomorrow. That is a dirty, dirty lie. I am painting mine. I'm really excited. Did I tell you what mine is? The cactus paddle, dark sky, cactus paddle, fork. The fork is taped to the cactus paddle. I took that reference photo myself because I couldn't find twine like I originally planned and a goldfish on a leash attached to the fork. I am so excited about this painting. I painted the same goldfish a million times, but I love it. And so I'm like, I want him on my wall. So yeah, that I'll have photos of that this weekend because I already started it last night, which means it will probably be done tomorrow or Friday. There is much excitement. Okay, stop it. Focus, Lisa. Okay. Oops, wrong side. You go here, you go here. I saw this photo. Where did I find that photo? Was that wildlife reference photos? Or is it Unsplash? Because that was one, I think I saved that photo from somewhere or something very similar anyway. That was pretty, I love that photo. Okay, this is from Kelsey, who said this is a 36 by 36 acrylic painting. I was aiming for a semi-surreal kind of thing. Not sure, just kind of went with it. Is there anything you would suggest to fix on it? The first thing that stands out to me is this green here that did not show up at all. There we go. That green looks like it's coming, it's too close to his nose. I don't like it. I like the painting. I love the painting. This right here, I would not have. It maybe if it was over here, but it's so close to his nose. To me, it's like he's got a runny nose. And I don't, maybe, maybe I'm just, let's be fair. I am very tired. I've been sitting here for two hours and my back wants to unalive me. But this, um, I like the color. I love the way your line, the black fading into the, the teal there or the like emerald green. I think that is beautiful. I love the artsy feel, the running water. I like so much about this. That line, if this were mine, I would move that line. I move it back or remove it or make it smaller. So maybe it only comes to here. But that, that one line, when I saw this, it's like, oh, hi, green line out of the nose. I, it, it, it's just, that is where I'm zoomed in at. Um, and I don't think that's where you want to zoom in. I think the paint running from the eye absolutely works. I think that looks wonderful and it balances. I like the balance between here and here. Beautiful. That has a really nice feel, but this line right here is just too, like, too much to his nose. Um, is the rest of this accurate? So one other thing though, I'm not loving. See the white here and then the white here. That, and I see where you've got it to where it kind of runs out. The thing I'm, that to me, this is too much. This contrast, I want to see a different color here from here. Um, because when I first looked at that, I was like, I know she's way more accurate with her drawings. I've seen your, your, your paintings. In my mind, I thought that this was like, you're at first glance, and it may be different because 36 inches is pretty big. When you see it in person, I bet you see this differently than when you see it on a small computer screen. So that is... This is one of the things when you work big, you definitely, when you're up close to something big, you don't notice stuff. You back away, you take a photo and you're like, oh, that looks weird. When you go back and look at the painting in person, 
It's like, no, that's not how that looks. And you take a photo again. Think, I have done this so many times. I'll take a photo again and look at it on the computer. And I'm like, that isn't even in the right place. And I'll go and look at the painting. No, it is in the right place. When you shrink it down, so that may be what's happening right now. We've shrunk down a 36 inch wide painting that is huge down to, I'm looking at this on maybe, what is this, seven inches? So yeah, that may be part of it. I bet it looks very different in person. So definitely keep that in mind. But this right now, I don't like the white here and here because it gives the illusion that you didn't draw him right. And I mean, when I look again, I see his chin in the side of his face, but I would like to see a little bit more contrast there because it, it's a little too, I didn't draw it right, even though I know for a fact that you did. So that would be one thing I would change. Um, I'd like to see a little bit more of the detailing in the chin, those little lines, that brush is way too fuzzy and way too big. Let's switch to you and switch smaller. Nope, that is not the right direction. But maybe a few more of these guys. I'd like to see a little bit more detailing in there. And I see yours, but what happened is your fur is just too white right there. And because it's so white, the lines aren't showing up. Like your lines are there, there's just not enough contrast. So it has a very flat feel. I think you've pulled some of the blue in this area, which is not showing up there. You've got the blue in here. That same blue needs to be all in this part of the chin, on this part of the face. Oh, there we go. Um, in this area, stop it. If I stop it, I mean, I'm the, I'm the one hitting the wrong button. It's not even a computer issue. Um, but I would change, get those shadows in there. That might, if you had enough blue in this, I think that the white here would be fine. Um, but right now it's too much the same and it's looking like he wasn't quite drawn right. Again, you've got to keep in mind, I'm looking at this much smaller than you intend on the original to be viewed. So what I'm telling you, you may go back and look at yours and go, no, I like how it is. And that's totally fine. But I'm thinking more of the blues in this area and in this area. I mean, actually, we can just do that real quick. Um... This is going to be super sloppy, but if we can get some of these blues in here, that's going to set that off a lot. It's going to separate him from that outer edge, so it's more obvious And while well, I'm at it. I should have done another line, whatever, or layer. I just want to get rid of that a bit. Actually, I don't even want that. I want you again. That is not drawn right, what I just did, not what you did. Um, but if we can start pulling, I'd like to see a little bit more dimension in a lot of this. The other thing that you can do, and I know you're going for a more loose abstract feel, but I would still, oh, actually two things. One, keep pulling these colors in. Don't, I don't like when black and white stripes or any animal. So like a cheetah with the spots or the tiger with the stripes. I don't like black up against white black right up against the orange. I like there to be a little bit of a transition. And for me, that transition is, is typically going to be a burgundy color or like a magenta. Right in between, well, that I'd probably go more than blues, but like right in here um, between the oranges. I like there to be just a little transition and it gives you a bit more depth. That is way too burgundy, but whatever, we're going with it. Um, in here, the blue, I like to see a little bit more right up against the black and it actually makes the black look deeper. You get a bit more dimension. So even though you're going for abstract, or not abstract, but more impression, not impressionistic either, more stylized, that's the word I'm looking for. Um, all my words are jumbled in my head right now. Even though you're going for more stylized, you can still get the depth, and I think that's gonna make for a much stronger piece to pull the realism a little bit more. And I've seen your work. I know you've got the skill to do this. So like, look at what a difference we're getting when we start just a little bit more and a little bit more. Whenever I do a shine on the eye, I'm usually going to pull more blues over the shine so it's not just straight white because the white is going to be very flat. Um, the highlight, same thing, the edge around the eye. Let's pull some blues in there. 
I could mess with this for so long tonight. This is one is really fun to like little changes are going to make a huge difference. Just adding that the, so much depth and doing that. I think you can have a lot more of the stripes too in general. Um, you know, you've got a lot more detailing in here that I would still keep pulling in. Um, let's see. Now this area here, see how you stopped right at that back neck? That neck, that's not his neck at all. That's, there's like bushes and stuff and dark, it fades into the background. Yours needs to do something else. So, because you've lightened it a bit, let's pull, maybe not that one, let's go that way. We need that to fade a little bit more. It looks weird the way it's chopped off. And it's okay to pull the blues and the blacks and the dark backgrounds, but we need a hint that his neck didn't fall off. So just by pulling these few things, let's get rid of that a little bit more. And then let's do this. That is not what I just meant to do. Well, partly it is. You are, you are not. Okay, so that gives us just a little bit, like it's not a lot of changes. I mean, do a better job than my half-baked, like sketchy mess. Make yours good. But by putting a little bit more dimension, continuing to work, I think that you can separate some of these areas where his face starts feeling a little bit more, like the chin and all of that. Get some more of those shadows, get some more of those darks. I think will make a huge difference. Um, I would get rid of part of that green. I don't like how high up that green comes over his nose. There, and you've got to watch that when you put things in front of the faces, where in front of the face it goes, because sometimes it just, it just, that's one of them that didn't work out for him. You know, I would definitely tone that down. I think part of it, part, part of it, wow, I am really tired. Part of it going in front of like the bottom part of his mouth is fine, but here is weird. Here looks like something's coming out of his, the corner there. So anyway, another thing, as I'm looking at this, I would darken up this whole area. Um, I would really darken this up. I would pull that coming out of the shadow more. Maybe not that line. Um, I think I would do a little bit more with the dark there too. Just to, again, a little bit more dimension. Um, so much of the white around the face is making it so that the tiger doesn't stand out as much as you want it to. And I think that's one of the things that you need to keep in mind. What is your goal? Where do you want the viewer's attention to land? What do you want them to feel when they see it? Do you, runny nose isn't my favorite feeling. Um, but the eye running, I love that. Like that worked out so well. Uh, the white pouring away from the face, and it, it's not working, and I think that the reason is that the white is too white on the tiger. I think if you tone that down with more blues, even with what I've got, it needs a lot more. If you tone that down with more of the blues, then the white, you're going to see the separation there. It, it's weird because it's not fully bleeding out into the canvas, but it sort of is. And it's one of those, pick, pick it, pick one. Is it supposed to look like the white of the tiger is bleeding into the canvas? Okay, that's fine, but make sure it looks that way because it doesn't right now. If it's not supposed to look that way, it's it, it feels like it's wanting to try looking that way, but not quite succeeding, if that makes sense. I'm being super harsh because I, your work is amazing and I, I, I know what you can do. Um, but yeah, that those are my tips for that. I'd like to see a little bit more dimension in the tiger um, for sure. And that beautiful, beautiful painting. God, the greens and blues and teals you got in that stripes. Oh, that looks so good. Oh, that's so good. Okay, anyway... Um, there is my advice. We are going to wrap this up next week. First will be Terry. So Terry, if you are watching, you are first on the list next week. Actually, yours is going to be the, oh, that is good. That is, yours will be the thumbnail for next week's because you're the first, whoever's been the first in, in line, it ends up being my thumbnail. So, um, thank you guys so much for joining tonight and thank you to the moderators. Their links are in the video description to their channels. Lots of great art group or art groups, art channels. I'm so tired. If you're on Patreon, make sure to join us over on Discord. If the link doesn't work, should the link that I just posted for our sketchbook challenge for Patreon, or not sketchbook challenge, but sketchbook prompts, our daily sketches, um, that has the current Discord at the time that I'm saying this. If it doesn't, 
let me know. I'll have to post one. I don't always get my Patreon notifications though. So send me, sometimes I don't even get the notifications when someone sends me a private message. So email me, lisa at lawcree.com. I should get that. I don't know, unless you're Joey. Me and Joey, our emails do not like each other. We will email back and forth and end up mess having to, I don't know what is with our emails, but they hate each other. It is the most bizarre thing. Anyway, thank you guys so much. Um, wonderful work. You guys, seriously, you should all be so proud of yourself. Like these are, these are awesome. Anyway, that's it. I think that's it. And Tuna thinks it's it too, because he's starting to, to chirp over there. Um, it's about bedtime for you, huh, Tuna Bird? My canary, in case you didn't know. Anyway, yeah, I think that's it. I think that's it. I'll see you guys next Wednesday where we will finish these. And then the following week, start leaving comments what you want to see for our next tutorial after this. So anyway, that's it. Thank you guys. Bye. I don't know where my buttons are. I'm too tired. Oh, wait. Nope. Oh, I guess that did work. Whatever. Okay, bye.